So now we're gonna implement the edit action and we wanna basically create a route um, where we have the blog post and the ID so that we can specifically edit that blog post. So it's gonna look something like this. We're gonna have a route for this. It'll generate a form for editing the blog post. We wanna load that blog post out of the database, put it in the form so you can change that stuff and then submit it and validate and then save the changes. So let's go create our routes for this. We're gonna need the, similar to new, we wanna put edit up here, and edit needs to go before the ID. This post can be afterwards, remember, because it's not gonna match anything with uh, an ID afterwards. And then we'll have this as the edit blog post path. We will have blog post edit uh, action, and we should be able to go and visit this URL. No route matches blog post for edit. So what we need is the ID in here as well. Um, and this can be in either order here because the variable is not going to match slash edit on this first get line um, because it doesn't have anything after the ID. So we can put this in either place before or after, but it's gonna match that uh, directly because the variables are only going to match that, that portion itself. The rest of that also needs to match. So the error message said we don't have a edit action. So we wanna do that. We want to create our edit action. We don't have an edit template, so we wanna create that as well. We'll go to blog post views, uh, edit html.erb, and an h1 of edit blog post. Close that, and we'll just display that. So the next step is we need to generate the same form for our blog post so we can display it. And if you remember under new, uh, we have this form for the blog post. Now we can actually reuse this for both of these pages. And the way to do that is to copy all of this HTML um, or ERB code, and we can create a new file and it's gonna start with an underscore, which is what is known in Rails as a partial. So this is not a full HTML response. It's just a portion of the page, a partial of the page. And we can paste this in here, and then our new action can use that, and our edit action can do the same thing. So we can use this, and we can say render partial form, and we can also give it local variables. So we can say locals, uh, and this will be blog post at blog post. And that's going to allow us to take our partial and say, instead of using this instance variable, which could come from anywhere, we wanna make sure that if you were going to use this partial, you must give us a blog post variable directly. And that's what this local is going to do. It's going to assign a variable named blog post that is local to um, the instance variable a blog post. So we should still be able to access blog post slash new, and it should do the exact same thing as before, and it does, it renders just fine. But when we go to edit, we want to be able to use the same form. So we can paste this in here, and we can use that as well. But this is going to raise an error because as it turns out, we have errors for nil class is undefined. Well, what does that mean? it basically says you called errors on some variable that returned nil. So if we say form.object is nil, our blog post variable is nil as well, and we have to look at our code and say like, well, we gave you the blog post. If you ever run into this issue, your controller probably did not set that instance variable. And we can check that here as well because instance variables are available anywhere, and yes, of course, our blog post was nil, and that is our issue. We need to look up the blog post by the ID first before we can render that edit form. So here we need to do the same thing as our new action, but instead of blogpost.new, we want to blogpost.find with the ID from the URL in our params. And we can always verify our params as well, so when we go to blog post for edit, it prints out the parameters. We have the ID parameter, and that is number four. So we can access that with params ID. Um, and this can be a string or a symbol. 
uh, Rails treats those as the same. So there we go. We have loaded our blog post, rendered the form, or rendered the edit page, which then renders the form partial, which then looks at the blog post that it was given and renders the form fields, and it says, oh, those that blog post already had some data for title and body, so we'll include those in the form. So this is awesome. We can go and then say, hello world, for or bang or whatever we want, and then we can click update blog post, and this is going to generate a form that points to blog posts for with a method post, but inside of here, it also specifies underscore method. And it used to be that browsers were only understanding of get requests, post requests, and that was about it. And patch, put, and delete were not supported by everything. So this hidden field added compatibility for all of that. But I'm pretty sure browsers understand all of the HTTP request types these days, but this is uh, a way for Rails to say, hey, we actually want a patch request when we generate this form, and Rails knows, okay, you sent me a post, but you really meant patch, we'll take care of it, and we'll use a patch request. So it's generating the patch request, it's got the authenticity token, same everything else as before, but now it's posting to blog post number four. And it knows, hey, we want to patch blog post number four instead of creating a post because the blog post that we gave it has an ID and it's able to see that in the form partial when it generates the form wrapper, it says, oh, this blog post has an ID. We'll send you to this location with blog posts slash four. But if it didn't have an ID, it would send you to blog posts because it knew you wanted to create a new one. So it's able to analyze this for you behind the scenes so you don't have to put an if statement here in your code. They moved it inside of Rails. So in order to finish this out, we need to have a patch request for the blog post ID. So we need this patch here. And this is going to be another separation. Even though the URLs are exactly the same, the get and patch request types are different. So Rails knows to analyze those separately. So this is going to go to the update action. And this one, we don't really need a name because it's going to look at this uh, blog post helper and generate the same URL because when Rails, when you use the Rails path helpers, it generates the string, but it doesn't care about the request type. That's what the browser needs to send. So you can have this name only on a single one for, uh, even if you have duplicates for different request types. So that is all we need to do there in order to wire it up. And we can go to our browser, click update blog post. And if you look at your Rails logs, the last time we did it, raised an error and said that action is not found. Um, so we'll need to put that in there. And then we'll, we're sent back to the edit page because that was not found. So now we go to our blog post controller and we add our update action, which is going to be very similar to create, but we need to find the blog post and we need to update it instead of creating a new one. So we want to find the blog post again by the params ID. Nope, can't type today. There we go. And we want to check if the blog post is able to be updated successfully given those params from the form. And we're using the same form so we can use the exact same blog post params helper down here that knows how to pull out only the title and the body. And if it was successful, it will return true, and we can redirect you to the blog post. But what happens if it was not successful? What happens if you deleted the title and tried to submit it? Well, it will raise errors, and we need to re-render the edit page. So we'll do the same thing. We'll say render edit, and we want to make sure it knows that it was an error. So we'll say unprocessable entity, and that's going to handle the error case. So if we delete this title and update our blog post, it'll tell us title can't be blank. It made a request to the patch blog posts for route, 
It went to the blog post controller update action. So that's all wired up correctly. It then loaded the blog post and then it went and said, okay, grab the post, the blog post parameters, verify that there's a title and body and we're going to only accept those. We'll try to update it in the database. The validations ran. It did not update it. You don't see any SQL queries for updating the record because it was not valid and it rendered the 422 unprocessable entity, which then displays the form again with errors. So now if we say hello world updated and we do this with valid form submission, this is going to be successful this time update the record in the database and our Rails logs are going to include that update SQL query to update the title and uh, it left the body alone even though we submitted it because it knew the body hadn't changed. There was, so there was no reason to update that in the database because it was exactly the same. And then it also knows you updated the record so we should also update the updated at timestamp as well. So that marks it automatically to the current time when it is saving. And once it's done, it redirects to the blog post that we just updated. And then we retrieve that blog post after the redirect and voila, we are good to go. So that works great.